X-Men, the 90s animated series, season 4, episodes 18 and 19, parts 1 and 2 of Beyond Good and Evil, The End of Time, and Promise of Apocalypse. Thoughts. So, spoilers for the show leading up to and including these two episodes, and those two episodes I absolutely love. So, before I get into them, the top link in the description box will allow you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. Please do so. And then there are a number of links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive in to the end of time. So, yeah, we open in the year three. 1999 because comic books do love stuff that's set in the year something 99 you know and I, I really appreciate that after all this time Apocalypse still prefers this um, what's it called pyramid in Cairo that's just you know I mean when you when you just get settled in a place you feel like staying there for thousands of years and let's see. yeah so the the uh, cable and the others try to to stop him and you know cable is, is one of those guys he's not even gonna try to solve the puzzle he's just gonna look up the walkthrough right away and you know oh push the snake okay gotcha snake why did it have to be snake and Apocalypse knew they were coming and used this as a trap, which is of course quite the trope. And not only a comic book one, but you know, the the smartest of villains know you're coming. And yeah, really cool fight between Cable and Apocalypse. And I really appreciate you know he so, so uh, yeah, and he manages to get the time travel thing, the passport, and then he says. I'm not evil, you know, just like, which, counterpoint, menacing laughs, you know, he, he pulls off several in these, just these two episodes, so, but yeah, the, the, you know, who, no, no one good ever does that, that's how we knew that Xavier was evil in that one episode where he was, because he was doing the menacing laugh, but the, you know, he says, I'm, I'm like Sisyphus, I, I, I'm never able to defeat you, you know, we've been fighting for thousands of years. And throughout all this, Cable is like, okay, maybe if I attack him like this, and, you know, and, and Apocalypse is like, oh, that's slightly annoying. Uh, you know, like, like it's a bug or something. I don't know. I, you know, f philosophically, quandary, you know, forming a shield, and it just, yeah, great stuff. And... Yeah, and and in the in the present, the X Men are attacked by Sinister's group, the Nasty Boys, and yeah, some really great fighting there. And yeah, love seeing Sinister, love seeing him get his hands dirty. And I I appreciate that from right away we can tell. Okay, there's something very specific going on here because last time Sinister went after both of the you know both Scott and Gene this time he only gets Gene you know so there's something something different this time and you know in the in the comics as well as let's see where did I put it uh, yes X-Men X-Men Legends 2 I forget, what is the subtitle again? Rise of Apocalypse? Yeah, Rise of Apocalypse. Also sees the two of them working together, you know. And it is just a, a cool, you know, like Sinister is often enough of a threat on his own, especially when he has a team working for him. Enough of a threat for the X-Men, but team him up with Apocalypse, who also, he doesn't even really need a team. He can he's a major threat to the X-Men all by himself, and yet he likes to form, you know, he, he has the, the four horsemen and everything. Now, I think that might be about what I have to say for this first episode. I like the Beast is so composed that even as he's being attacked by Vertigo, 
he can still like coherently explain how to defeat her and yeah really love the the entrance apocalypse makes at the end of the episode you know walking out of the the shadow really really cool and that brings us to promise of apocalypse so yeah this time the the shiar are involved as well which this is the first time that apocalypse deals directly with the the shiar empire and you know he was uh, what's the word he um Um, hmm. Yeah, the the uh, Kelsey was that her the the sister of Lilandra. You know, she sang like bird. She looked like bird. She is a bird. You know, she's trying to usurp the throne, and you know the the an, an apocalypse just like no, I lied. You know, he's he's like. He was, he was just there for Oracle, who I'm starting to suspect they just didn't cast a voice actor for, like, I kept expecting her to say something, you know, she runs into the room, and Lalandra's like, I know, you don't have to say anything, you know, and the, the, um, yeah, they're, you know, they're attacked, she still doesn't, you know, she doesn't, like, say, look out, or something, just, yeah, I'll I'll have to try to watch out for the next two episodes if she ever actually has a line. Although I don't know, I guess it's possible that the character does not speak a anyway. And yeah, and we learn that over hundreds of years, Apocalypse came to fully understand the axis of time. Let's see. Oh right, and uh, yeah, I I. We, of course, have Bishop going to the Axis of Time, struggling to find his way out of there. And, you know, he encounters this guy who's been stuck there forever. And, you know, it really... And so, you know, he's gone insane without any human contact, without any variety in st stimuli. He's just stuck there. Really reminded me of the Jake Busey-looking dude in... I want to say, was it... Let's see. It wasn't. It was one of the Assassin's Creed games. It wasn't the. F it wasn't Assassin's Creed Three, which is technically the fifth game. I want to say it was Revelation. Yeah, Revelations. You know, and that was also a somewhat similar deal. <coughs> Very cool to see Psylocke. Uh, you know, one of my favorite. You know, I was hoping that she would show up. She's one of my favorite mutants from the the comics, and they do a really great job with her. You know, she's she's sneaky. She uses the you know she she tries to lure you into a false sense of security, and then uses the the psychic dagger and the the back of the neck. The yeah, they they really did a, a great job with her. And you know, she uses she knows Archangel well enough. She knows he's not just gonna let her fall. When she does that, you know, it was tactical. It wasn't like, you know, at the, you know, he thinks, oh, she's like given up. She she would rather die than get caught. I can't, uh, you know, let her die. And Mystique, Sabretooth, and even Magneto show up to stop, um, yeah, yeah, to to grab Psylocke and. I like that Mystique, you know, she, like, she she's trying to get them to do the, you know, no, shoot her, there's two of us, but I'm the real one. But, you know, the others are like, um, I'm a psychic. And Wolverine's like, I can I can smell the, you know, you're not part of the team, you know. And, and she's like, okay, forget this. Just, that was, that was, yeah, I like that. And, yeah, this is really like one of the, Let's see, last last time I tried to talk about this, I, I got it backwards. I want to say they're called comic events. Because they're not event comic. Because event comics is like a specific... Yeah, that's a specific... Uh, 
yeah, I'm pretty sure they're called comic events. You know, this thing of bringing together so many different, I mean, this, this, these two episodes feature more, and it's not, you know, it's not the first time that this show has done that, but, you know, they feature more individual characters that actually have character, not just show up and show off their powers, than any one of the live-action movies, and it also features more factions, and even, you know, there's more factions here than there are in the, the live-action movies, you know, it took them forever to even introduce aliens at all. And, yeah, and we learn, you know, Magneto wants his wife back, which, you know, yeah, that is, the, the like, un, you know, Magneto is a character, he's a complex character, he is someone who is willing to do the wrong thing if he thinks it really will do some, some good, you know, and he, you know, the, the death of his wife is one of his... You know, he, he said in an earlier episode, this is one of my biggest regrets, you know, so, yeah. And we know there's some chance that Apocalypse is lying to him, because he was lying to Lalandra's sister at the start of the episode. And, yeah, it's very clear that Apocalypse is gathering various psychics and... You know, clearly this is not like some random, uh, you know, what was it called? Like, crime of opportunity. He has a specific plan. And, you know, it involves time travel and gathering psychics. So, just, yeah. Very, very cool. I have to wonder if the show is going to get into who Cable's parents are, since... The show hasn't done that yet, and both Cable and his parents are in play in this story, so I can imagine that that might be... And I believe this is the f Yeah, this is the first time we see Apocalypse time travel on the show. Uh, earlier, when we saw him in present day, it wasn't time travel, it was just, you know, he's been around for thousands of years. He was there in present day, but this is the version from the year 3999, traveling to the present. So, yeah, appreciate that bit of, you know, this is, this is the most dangerous he's ever been, which is a great way to finish off. Uh, yeah, that's right. Originally, this wasn't actually the end of the fourth season. I, I do think it's a great way to end the fourth season. This entire four-parter. But yeah, there were actually... Let's see. There were like six episodes after this four-parter. And... But, but yeah. Um, that is what I have to say for these episodes. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow... We are finishing off Season 4 of the show with the last two parts of Beyond Good and Evil, The Lazarus Chamber, and End and Beginning. So, catch you then. Make my marvel.